Hey there. I hope that you're doing well. Today I'd like to invite you to have a look at this old map with me. It's a city map of Vienna from 2007. It says down here. It's valid until 2007. And I thought it's funny how it doesn't feel like that long ago, but when you look through it, there's actually quite a lot of changes that have happened in the city. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Vienna's currently growing quite fast. So for a long time it was a city of about one and a half million people. But in the last 20 years or so, it's grown to 1.9 and it keeps growing. So this is a development that you can also see in what's being built and how the infrastructure of the city changes. And let's start with maybe the most impressive change. And one that um, I think few people ever expected to happen with a new train station. So here we are along the Gürtel. Wiedner Gürtel. Landstraße Gürtel. This would be the 4th district, the 3rd and the 10th district. And here in this area, it's quite large, you see the former Südbahnhof, the southern train station. Vienna used to have a, quite a number of train stations, but the two that were most well known were the western train station and the southern one. And basically, for as long as I can remember, the western one was the main station. It's where you would arrive when you would come from most parts of Austria. The Südbahnhof actually consisted of two different ones. If you look closely, you can see the tracks running up here in this direction. And we have some of the right angle that are running down here. And some that combine these two. So what we have is a Südbahnhof, a train station for the tracks running south, and we have the Ostbahnhof the terminal station for tracks running east. Now, you might know that uh, Vienna lies in the eastern part of Austria, so it wasn't far from the Iron Curtain. It's only about 50 kilometers to Bratislava from here. So, these tracks here, they would go east in the direction of Bratislava and of Hungary and there would be a hard border here on this side so they weren't used that often anymore in the 20th century and the tracks going south would continue to Graz that's the second biggest city in Austria but it too lies not too far from the former Iron Curtain so these tracks weren't used as much either as the ones going out west. And it means that this train station here was sort of left to itself. There wasn't a lot of investment. And um, 
I remember just before I got demolished in 2009, it won an award as the ugliest train station of Austria, which is a bit harsh. It was a building from the 50s. There were two other train stations there beforehand, but they got demolished. And when they built the one in the 50s, which was supposed to be very modern, with a big hall that was quite airy, they tried to combine these two terminal stations, so the one for the eastern tracks and for the southern tracks. But basically it led to one big hall, um, that was a bit confusing. There were 18 tracks there all in all. 18 platforms and I always thought it was quite hard to find your way around so in the 90s they made plans to demolish these train stations here these two and instead build a through station meaning the trains wouldn't come up here and end but rather they could come in from the west and continue down towards the east or the south so it wouldn't be a terminal station trains don't end here anymore and you can see this is a really really big area it's a hundred hectares or more than that even and the interesting part is that the new station, which is located here at Südtiroler Platz, actually only uses half of the space. And the other area, along this street here, Sonnenwendgasse, now consists of residential buildings and office spaces. There's a whole new place here in Vienna where you can live. It's called Sonnwind Viertel, after the street. And there's also a second area, which I think is in this corner, but I'm not too sure. Which is called Quartier Belvedere, after this area here. Oberes Belvedere and Unteres Belvedere. So this is a a uh, baroque castle with a beautiful garden here and the uh, botanical garden here on the side there's been some critique with the new station of course like some say that it's too far to walk from the underground station or well, there's a problem that there is only one underground line running towards it but I think it's been a really good development for Vienna and um, I don't know if anyone really misses the old train station. Maybe if you remember it from if you used to live here before, or if your commute took you past the station. So I understand that for some people this might be a question of nostalgia. But for the city I think it was quite good. So, this is a big, big area that you probably wouldn't recognize today, based on this map. And we see one more thing that's changed. We have an underground line running down here, the U1. This is in fact the oldest uh, underground line in Vienna, this part here. And it used to end right here at Räumannplatz. It used to because now it continues all the way down there. Let's see if we can find the new station where it ends. So it would go past. Past this area here, Lavart, 
dann der Towards Altes Landgut, Alaudagasse, and takes a little curve over here, and then there you have a big spa with some hot springs. Opala. So you can go there on the underground now on a cold winter day and warm up. It's quite good. So that's one train station that's changed. And here's another one that's in the middle of changing. Or again, technically there's two. Here we are in the second district with the beautiful Owl Garden. Here's the Porcelain Museum and the Wiener Singer Knaben. Over here we have the Danube. And in between there are two train stations. Nordwestbahnhof, and I think this here was a separate one called Nordbahnhof, so north and northwest. You can see there's a whole lot of tracks here. Some continuing down there, and these would lead up here and across the Danube. And the ones over here at Nordwestbahnhof. They would stay on this side of the Danube and also continue north. So I have to admit, for the longest time, I didn't even know that these two existed. And I think a lot of people don't know. Even though they're some of the, what they used to be some of the biggest train stations in Vienna. One of the reasons might be that the Nordwestbahnhof hasn't been used in almost a hundred years. So passenger transport was abandoned in the 1920s. The reason being political. The trains from here would go up to uh, Bohemia and Moravia, so what today is the Czech Republic, all the way up to the German border. And of course, after the First World War, there would have been a new border here. So the trains were abandoned. And the same goes for the tracks running north from here. They would also run into a new border. However, before that, there was quite a lot of trans passenger transport from here. And in the 19th century, they built this really big hole here. Um, I think it's already been demolished in the meantime, and the only thing that was left from it was this post station here. Uh, the building's still there, but the post office is also gone. So this is some outdated information. But what's interesting is that with this big, big hole that was placed here, and no passengers, they had to look for some other use for it. And in the 1920s, they decided to turn it into a venue for indoor skiing. I think it was one of the first places in Europe where that was possible. So that's pretty cool. Right now, all the buildings that are still here are going to be demolished. The company is already in the process of moving out. And they're going to build a new quarter here with residential buildings, with a big park in the middle, some office spaces. 
you can already look up the plans for the new buildings online and I think there's some really cool projects there uh, some new concepts for communal living too that I find really interesting and the same goes for this area it's already changed quite significantly when you get out at this train station and walk up here you're no longer walking along the train station but instead there's lots of new buildings here so very modern buildings with a lot of office spaces um, new streets with little shops and restaurants and cafes and I think it's quite a nice area to live you're right by the Danube and over here, there's a lot of places where you can go swimming here it's called Copa Cagrana this has changed too, this is now Copa Beach alright now So we're in the middle of talking about train stations here's the other one that I've mentioned Westbahnhof so this is the station that um, is in my memories this is how I always arrived in Vienna before I lived here and there's a really interesting street here when you get out from the train station to Europaplatz you can then walk into the city or towards the inner city and you would usually take this street here it's called Maria Hilfer Straße and it's quite fascinating this has been a path for a long long time probably before Roman times even so it's quite an ancient way of course it turned into Marie a lot later this was one of the first streets outside of the inner city the inner city being here that was lit by gas lamps and the reason is that the Habsburgs the ruling house in Austria they would live here in the Hofburg but I guess in summer it was a bit too hot and stuffy here so they would go aside to their summer palace to Schönbrunn and they would travel along this road Mirhilferstrasse which is why it got some Latins very early in fact this is only half of the Marie-Hilferstrasse it continues out there so this is about two kilometers and there's another two kilometers on the other side of the Gürtel so this big road here that separates the inner from the outer districts and you would talk about the inner Marie-Hilferstrasse the inner part and the äußere Marie-Hilferstrasse, the outer part but what interests us is this area it's on the corner between the 6th district and the 7th and it's always been a really big shopping street but of course one of the problems was that you would have all of these people walking along here trying to do their shopping and at the same time you would have a lot of traffic going up and down and it wasn't really welcoming anymore for pedestrians so about 10 years ago they decided to turn it into a new type of street a Begegnungszone which is a bit of a mixture between a pedestrian area and a normal road so you can still ride your bike there 
um, you can at least in parts go through it by car but it's limited to 20 kilometers an hour and uh, I remember it as being a quite a tough process to turn it into this Begegnungszone, the shared space there was a lot of conflict around it um, the question of where the traffic would move because obviously it wouldn't just disappear the uh, people who lived in the area not being too happy when suddenly the bus was redirected through their streets etc so it took quite a long time for this to really be accepted but by now I think it's a, a really nice uh, street much greener, there's more space I think the question of the bus has been solved the 13A is the bus in question it's a really really busy bus that crosses the Mirehilferstrasse here along Neubaugasse but wouldn't uh, go up this place anymore to Kirchengasse so it just crosses once and in fact it's quite popular now this new type of Begegnungszone and a number of other um, places also here in the first have been transformed the same way okay now there's one more thing that I'd like to show you and that's right here now you might think this is a bit of an odd map because there's not much here there's some streets with houses here and here up here and in this area there's a number of little lakes all the way around here in fact here we have a lake with houses in the middle And as you can imagine, all of this looks quite rural. So I don't know what it was like then, but I guess most of these places here that are all white would have been fields or meadows. But today, one big part of it has changed, and that this big empty space here this is today one of the biggest urban development projects in Europe called Seestadt Sea means lake so it's a lake city there's another little lake now here in the middle and all the way around it they're building new streets and houses for 20,000 people all in all I think they've built sort of the southern area by now and the northern one is still in development so it's going to be a city within a city And what's really interesting about it, I think, is the idea that it's not just supposed to be a residential area. So yes, 20,000 people are going to live here, but there's also going to be 20,000 workspaces. So theoretically, everyone living here could also work here. And 50% of the area is supposed to be taken up by public spaces so parks and squares 
you can walk around the lake and play with your children or go for a ride on your bike and one of the developers said it's just really important to make sure that a, a public space is something that can be used by everyone it's a really big part of life and it adds to the quality of life for everyone who lives here now you might wonder that's all really well but how do you get here? it looks like we're in the middle of nowhere so do you have to take the car? no in fact there's another thing that's changed about Vienna And that change starts here at Schottenring. There's an underground station for U2 and U4. And then there's an L dotted line continuing east for the U2. So at the time, this didn't exist yet. But it has been built in the meantime. So the U2 continues here to Paterstern, then over here, along the former area of the Messe Wien. So the Congress Center, this too is an area that's changed quite significantly. Today there's a new university here. Down here past the football stadium across the Danube here past the hospital and The last part that they show is up here to Erzatzukalstrasse. But from here it continues. So in the meantime, all of this has been built. And you can take the U2 all the way here to Seestadt. So in the space of not quite 15 years, we have a new train station. We have a whole lot of new residential areas where there used to be train stations. We have busy streets turned into almost residential areas to pedestrian zones. And a little city within the city not to forget about the new underground stations and in fact we can do soon do another one of these videos when there's going to be a whole new underground line or soon I guess it's going to take a while before that's finished but they're already in the process of building it So, I hope you enjoyed this little tour through Vienna and all the changes that are happening here at the moment. Thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you again soon.